When you build a high horsepower hot rod, you want to get that power to the ground. Let's talk pinion angle and how we're going to get that power down. Hi, I'm Damian Braze with QA1. Today we're going to talk about pinion angle adjustment or more appropriately driveline adjustment. So when we're looking at pinion angle adjustment, we actually need to look at the entire driveline and the angles associated with the driveline and the drive shaft in order to get everything set appropriately. When we're talking pinion angle adjustment, we really need to look at the entire driveline as a system. And that's why we want to start with the engine. We want to figure out what angle our engine and transmission are at so we can make sure that our pinion runs at an angle parallel or close to the engine and transmission angle to get everything set appropriately. So we wanna have them run approximately parallel to each other and we'll adjust the pinion up or down a little bit depending on the application and the vehicle, how everything's actually set in relation to each other. But there's a couple tools that you're gonna to need to do this. First off, we're gonna start with an angle finder. Now you can get the inexpensive dial type like this uh, from the local a hardware store. A digital angle finder works much better, or you can also get a phone app that would allow you to do that as well. Uh, we're going to use a digital angle finder today. So first thing that we want to do is find a surface on the engine, transmission, or slip yoke where we can get a measurement from. Um, this car has exhaust running underneath the drive shaft, so it is difficult to get to the slip yoke but we can actually go off the front of the balancer. This car has an LS in it, nice flat surface on the front of the balancer. So we're gonna put our angle finder up here, and zero it out on the front of the balancer. And we're gonna use that for the rest of our measurements. Uh, with the manual transmission in this car, it does have a nice flat surface on the bell housing here. So we'll double check it and make sure that it's still zeroed out. And that looks good. Um, now, if you've got a machine slip yoke, you can use that as well. This car, we just don't have access to it with the exhaust running underneath and it's pretty tight up against the floor pan up here. So we've got our angle, we'll go to the rear end. Now on the rear end, we've got an 8.8 .8 in this car. So we've got the nice flat flange on the front of the diff that we can measure off of. We can also measure off the U-joints on the housing. Uh, this car, we've actually got about a half a degree or so of pinion up. Now this car has the factory upper trailing arms in it. They're not adjustable. Uh, putting an adjustable trailing arm in like the QA1 trailing arms would allow us to bring that pinion angle down a little bit. And reason we wanna do that is under load, that pinion's gonna wrap up. The rear diff is gonna wrap up and it's gonna straighten out that angle. So having the pinion pointed down a degree or two is really gonna help everything operate more efficiently as the car's under load and going down the track. Now that I've covered what we're measuring, now we need to look at the how. If you've got adjustable trailing arms like these, we've got right and left hand threads. So loosen up the jam nuts. You can actually adjust this on the car. With this car, in order to rotate the pinion down a little bit, we would actually lengthen the upper trailing arm. If you've got a car where you need to rotate the pinion up, you would want to shorten the trailing arm up. So if you've got a leaf spring system, you would use shims. Um, Differing types of suspension have differing methods, but in general, we're looking at the same type of thing and making similar adjustments to it. When measuring driveline angles and making adjustments to the pinion angle, the suspension does need to be loaded and the car sitting at ride height. If you don't, you're gonna get wrong angles because you do have some dynamic changes in the rear suspension that will change those angles. Proper drivetrain angles are gonna help apply the power to the ground and extend the life of your drivetrain components. For more information, visit QA1.net and go drive it.